Here we have a P30 intake manifold that comes stock from a B16A SI. And as usual, we will talk about what we will do to achieve improved flow and greater efficiency beyond its stock capabilities. We will also talk about rudder length, differences between the P30 and the ITR manifold, and what may be working against you if you have a B16A or a mild B20 VTEC. I will talk about the uncommon spoon product and also calculate runner harmonic some dyno references and we actually ran 14.5 on a B16A that is OEM. So you'll see. Here we are now, the P30 manifold. Oh, it's already chopped up. So we're gonna show you the insides now. Let's turn it, all right. Here you can see the runner entries need a little, a little bit of work to just give it a good flare on the entry. As you can see, it needs some work. And we chop the manifold all the way to the flange because you can't really port this section if you don't chop that flange. We see people just cut it from the top, right? But the thing is, it's, it doesn't let you port the transition really good. You could run your finger through this area when you see porters that chop the manifold just on the plenum, and I promise you, you'll see there's a ledge or a corner on that area. And so from this angle, we will show you this later, when we're finished porting it. So you can see the difference, all right? Now let's head on to the porting bench. All right, now we lubricate the runners first before making a pass, you know, with the ETF mix and mineral spirits, all right? So we gotta, we start with opening it up so that the flare is good and the taper, you know? Now let's speed it up this way, it doesn't get too boring, okay? All right, we start off on the entry, just expanding it as much as we can. This way, towards the head or towards the cylinder head, it tapers down, you know, so it's going to be really good for port efficiency and intake velocity. All right, so let's keep going, All right? And as most of you notice, we try to infuse a lot better taper. This is because you're trying to get more airspeed up. And the more you can do that, the more efficient you're going to fill the cylinders or the, you know, the chamber. Now, as you can see here now, we try to open up the, f the entry. You know, we, we try to flare it open this way. Once we go with the 80 grit and then the 120 grit, it's starting to get flared like a velocity stack entry. That's gonna be really good. All right, now we show you this on the vise so that we can do the upper part or the roof the, of the entry. All right, to speed it up to show you how we flare it all around, right? Okay, now we're gonna wash it up to go to the clean bench. All right, now here it is. You can see the taper has started, you know, or the increasing of taper that we're doing has started and we're actually flared up or flared out the runner entry. This way, when we smooth it with the 80 grit and the 120 grit, it's gonna look like a velocity stack. Let's look at this. Because the roof and the bottom is the short turn and the long turn, the roof ha is shorter than the bottom. So we do this. We cut a piece of guarded hose, you know, and then put a wire in between it. This way, this is the level of the entry of the runners. And then we get a piece of masking tape. This way, that becomes the marker on the flat. And look, it's centered. You can do this with a measuring tape and whatnot, but instead of averaging out the length, here, you get the center length right in the middle or you know right on the spot so here we put the masking tape okay oh wait oh it's taking my hands all right uh okay go around all right there okay 
Now we have the length. We just measured with the ruler and then you got the actual length in inches. We actually did this with the ITR manifold that we have and this is the difference. Look, the P30 intake manifold has a runner length from the runner entry all the way to the flange as nine inches. So you know, so when you think about it, you compare it with the ITR, that's actually just seven inches in runner length, you know, so that's actually short, right? Let's do the math now. And the port length is usually 3.5 inches. So seven plus 3.5, that's 10.5 inches intake length from the valve to the runner entry. So that's short. Well, not really, but you know, but look at this on the P30 being that it's nine inches in runner length plus 3.5, that's 12.5 inches total runner length. So let's calculate the harmonics on that for both intake runner length. Let's start with the ITR and let's go with the second harmonic, which is from 8.8 8 to 10,000 RPM. So, you know, that's the signal where it's pulsing with a 7% strength, you know, with the harmonics. Now on to the P30, here it is. All right, now here, you can see it's from 7,000 all the way to 8,000, which is kind of like an ideal RPM when you think about it, when you're running a B16A, regardless if it's cammed or just type R cams, this is kind of perfect, especially on those that are running stock B20 block, but with a B16 head, you don't need a type R manifold for that. This might be just better. Let's go to the dyno. Let me explain it better. Here's a customer's B16 that we did sometime around 2016. You can see the peak power, right? Here's a better dyno. Look, it peaks around 8.5 and it's done by 9,000 RPM. So when you remember the calculation for the P30, 7,000 to 8,000, look, look at that. This engine actually ran a type R manifold because the customer wanted type R, but hey, customers are always right, right? for what they want but for the engine i wanted the p30 but hey he wanted the type r so but when you look at it you can see with the p30 with that runner length it might have boosted the power even better that will help the top end more and on the itr manifold runner called the calculation if you remember this this is what we get from 8 8 all the way to 10,000, which is already beyond what the engine has. And so when you think about it, the P30 might just be really, really good on certain setups, even on a mild B20. So hey, that's worth a shot. And actually, you know, I wanted to talk about this. Sometime around 2018, we did a friend's B16A, which was basically stock. B16A EG that had a P30 pistons. All I did was port the head, run CTR cams, and actually it just ran a stock P30 manifold. And believe it or not, a stock cast header exhaust, you know, just a stock header. And guess what? It actually ran 14.4 that fast for just a, basically a stock engine. We actually street tuned the hatchback or the engine the night before the race. So we actually didn't have enough time. We just tuned it so that it would run safe. And then we went to the racetrack the next day. And hey, it ran 14.4. What about that? All right, now let's go back to the porting bench and go with the 80 grid and then the 120 grid. Let's go. All right, here we are now. Sorry about the click leg, it just rained, so it's making noise. Uh, what do you call that in English? Wait, um, wait, I forgot. Oh, crickets, yeah. Okay, we're gonna spray this now so that it's ready for the 80 grid. Crickets, how would I forgot that or forgotten it? All right, now here we go. Start smoothing this. And actually, you know, you start to feel unusual bumps or lumps after you did the carbide. So now we speed it up so it's not boring. All right. So it's not unusual to go back to the carbide once you get to fit it, to smoothen this out. So it, we can go back and forth just to get the achievement that we need, you know. So here we go. We actually go back and then spray it again with the 
ethyl alcohol and soapy water. And then we go again because we start to see the differences or the bumps. So we want to get it to smooth out really good. Actually, you know, we I plan to just do all of this with the 80 grit just to show you guys that you can actually get the consistency and the texture finish that you need without needing different grits. It's like with the right experience and the right hands, you can get the texture that you need. You don't need to use all different kinds of grits. You know, it's, it's kind of like the saying goes with no tools would make a good carpenter, but a good carpenter would make good work with just basic stuff, basic tools, I mean, you know. Now let me show you the top side or the roof of the entry. Now would you look at that, right? We'll just need a few more passes with the 80 grit and then we're going to take it to the washing area and we're going to wash it with water and then show you guys so how it is. It's, it's going to be looking good. Oh, but wait, almost forgot. I mentioned this earlier, the spoon venturi plate. I understand that we were talking about the dinographs and all that. I know some people would have said, now, how come the B16B has a type R manifold, right? And we showed you the dinograph and it would have been better if it had a, if a B16 has a B30, right? But look at this, the spoon venturi plate. All right, this is what they did. Look at this. It may not be directly related to intake runner length harmonics, but it's to solve the loss of mid-range. If you look at that, the reason why they call it Venturi plate is because it's actually a Venturi, you know. It's, uh, it's trying to become or do a Venturi type of thing on the intake. Look, you see that? The, the, their design pr principle is this, see? That's pretty smart, right? And so if you're a Spoon fan, how come you didn't know that? And also the other solution that Spoon does is the B16B, they put a B18C crank, they stroke it up. Okay, after washing the intake manifold, we decided to go back with the 80 grit once again to get smooth. Okay, we spray it again. You know, we gotta spray it a lot, you know, lubricate the sanding roll really good. This way it gives a really, really good finish it up all right as you can see it's starting to look really really good and consistent so we're gonna show you later when we finish smoothing it you know all through and through oh i can't wait to show you guys how this would look it's gonna look really really good and it's gonna be more efficient when it starts running on a certain engine it's gonna start pushing good induction and this way it's gonna be really strong and actually fuel efficient too so that's gonna be something that we all welcome okay yeah okay now we go wash this up and show you guys on the clean bench let's go now would you look at that Ooh, it does look good right you can see the entry is like a mini velocity stack so you know it's gonna be flowing efficiently you know it's gonna be really really good and let me let me go back to this remember earlier i said that the reason why we chopped the flange of the throttle is because if you look at it let's pretend that we didn't chop the flange all right we just chopped the plenum okay here see how are you gonna port the certain angle to make it smooth there's an angle that you can't reach because of this right and I, if you see it, an um, intake manifold that's ported with just the chopped plenum and not the flange, run your hand here and I promise you there would be a corner or ledge. So it's not going to be flowing good, right? And here it is. Look, runner one and two, and then three and four. Look, it looks really good, right? Light don't lie. And from the other side, look all the way even runner one see it's good and here's again the entry from the plenum it looks really good from the throttle too and now let's go with the before and after because i saved some here look it looks really good right and it's like from the from the stock all the way to the finished ported one and again this is my extra manifold so if you have an SIR or a B16 locally, we, this is again a one-time deal. 
Keith Thurman one time. For 5000 we can trade or we can just talk about it. Hit us up. And next, we just might port an ITR manifold. So, hey, let us know down below in the comments if you want to see that or any questions that you might have on this video or the other ones.